In the age of reinvention of the video game adaptation genre, does Twisted Metal continue the success that has been seen in the last few years? Let's talk about it. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of the first season of the Peacock original series, Twisted Metal. This is based off the PlayStation video game series and is uh, created by Michael J. and Jonathan Smith. So just to let you know, this will be a non-spoiler review or as non-spoiler as it can get because I do have to talk you know, a little bit of the plot of this story. Uh, but for the most part, major details will not be revealed. So be safe. Don't have to worry. But anyways... So if you're somebody who has played video games or knows the Twisted Metal franchise, a 30 minute action comedy uh, series from Peacock is not something you would imagine a Twisted Metal franchise thing would be as an adaptation. Twisted Metal is a series that does have a story aspect to it. It's about a world where Calypso has created this Twisted Metal competition and people fight to survive. It's similar to like maybe a little bit like the Hunger Games where one winner will win everything. You don't think about a series that will be about a man on a run to retrieve an item. It's just that that's not what this kind of storytelling aspect of Twisted Metal is. Think about like Mortal Kombat, the video game series where there are storytelling aspects, but you're more interested in the kind of combative kind of car control vehicular uh, combat situation where you're just driving around murdering people. That's just not, that's what Twisted Metal is mostly known for doing. So when they created a TV series out of this, starring Anthony Mackie and Steve, uh, Stephanie Beatrice and Thomas Hayden Church, you're like, I don't know what to think about that, to be fairly honest. But most people who watch this series will have, know nothing about the franchise. So it, it makes sense from that aspect. But going into it, it's kind of like, how do you handle some of this, when, especially when you know the Twisted Metal franchise, which I know a little bit about. So on that aspect, the idea of the series is a little bit different from the actual franchise that is Twisted Metal. We have a character named John Doe who is in the Twisted Metal franchise, is one of the drivers, who is basically a, uh, a milkman. And what a milkman is, is somebody who runs errands or has to make a delivery to a specific location. If you ever worked at like an Amazon or uh, some kind of place that has to deliver something, that's what usually is what it's called. It's usually called milk run. Why it's called that it has something to do with like World War II or something like that. But in essence, it's a delivery person in a lot of respects. So this milkman, played by Anthony Mackie, has to basically go retrieve an item from Chicago from this person named Calypso and bring it back to this character named Raven, who's played by Nev Campbell. And in the process, if he if he succeeds and survives, he will be able to live in New San Francisco for the rest of his life, which he kind of wants to end up being a milkman because it's very, very dangerous. Well, in the process of his journey, he comes across a character named Quiet, who's played by Stephanie Beatrice, and they basically travel on this quest where they meet characters like Agent Stone, who's played by Thomas Hayden Church. They, of course, meet Sweet Tooth, who's voiced by Will Arnett and is played by, of course, Samoa Joe. And they meet other people like Jason Mostakis and Chloe Feynman, who are individuals that are characters that are actually in the video game, which I don't, I don't want to spoil too much, but they are characters that are very much uh, in respective nature, the characters that were in the video game game and there's also references and storytelling aspects and ideas that show different places that you may have visited in the video games but in essence this is a world this is a story about character getting from point a to point b back to point b uh, or point A uh, with the delivery and the kind of the nature of everything that plays out with that. So in essence, there are there is vehicular combat in this in this TV series, but it's a much more character driven story than what, even what the video game nature would be like. And so when it comes to a TV series like this, to be fairly honest, it's not that I was worried that this series couldn't be successful. It's the idea that this series is taking based off a video game franchise that's more worried about gameplay than it is storytelling. You got to be honest and be a like Mortal. Kombat combat the story is never what you go to see these things for you want to see cars blow up each other you want to see things go boom and die and you want to see characters that you know and love pop up in the series like i said john doe is very much a character in the video game franchise that drives his own car or something like that it's just one of those things that you go do they really need to do this and no they really don't but i i get it. they want it subscribers and stuff like that it's just very much the nature of like you know sony trying to create this arm of its you know of its division where it wants to make successful video games and not make them like a joke like they have been and video games in general have never been great adaptations when it comes to film or tv but i think in the last few years we've gotten a steady steady stream of interesting ideas interesting concepts the last of us was a great example you know mortal kombat the last 
movie was a pretty decent example. And even Uncharted, the movie was good for what it's worth. It's just the worry is that they were going to not follow this, the franchise and at least give it to the it's homage and stuff like that. And that's just kind of where I lean into it. And I know I've been talking for a little bit, but it's just, it's one of those things, you know, as if you're a huge fan of Twisted Metal, you have to go in a little bit of like skepticism just based on what they're trying to do. They want to make this a 30 minute comedic TV series. And that, that you know, as, as silly and crazy and over the top as Twisted Metal is, you know, they have a character named Sweet Tooth that has this clown mask and this flaming stuff coming out of his head and stuff like that. It's just, you know, how, would, this series <laughs> would this series deliver? That's the honest question of the day. So do you find yourself out there in the world trying to find a book to read? Everything is not speaking to you. You want to find something a little more over the top and crazy and silly. You know, unlike the typical tropey books that are out today. Well, personally, I found a book just for you. This book, which is called J.R. Castillo Comes Home, which is written by Johnny A. Mann, is the story of a writer from uh, that comes back to his hometown. He's a noir writer. And he tries to get back with his high school crush as well as dealing with a serial killer in his hometown. And as you expect, if you read Johnny A. Mann's material before, it's over the top, it's silly, it's graphic, and it's a lot of fun because there's a lot of heart and inventiveness put into it. But it's also a book that, you know, is unique for its own right, and it's a book that I definitely recommend if you read anything else that he's written. It's something that you might find fun, you might find entertaining, and I highly recommend it. So, you know, definitely check it out. It's currently on Barnes & Noble's online retail store. Uh, but once again, that is J.R. Castillo Comes Home, which is written once again by Johnny A. Mann. And uh, yeah, it's a book that I highly recommend so definitely check it out and uh we'll see you soon bye guys and so with that said for my honest review of this tv series it's a very enjoyable series it's well acted it has a lot of fun with this material problem is is the material doesn't hold up when it comes to the tv storytelling aspect it's not bad it's not in any way insulting but i think the stuff that they're doing in this series which i can't spoil and i won't spoil hard to kind of swallow to be fairly honest there are stuff that john doe and quiet contribute to this series that i think they push a little too hard in and like kind of unbelievable territory to be fairly honest and i know this is twisted metal and it's very unbelievable in its own right but I think Anthony Mackie tries too hard to be funny, and it comes off a little grating, to be fairly honest. I think the writing staff is too are preoccupied with how do we make this a wacky, wacky world that some of the storytelling development of these characters falls by the wayside. You know, it's nice that this is a TV series, but to be fairly honest, this could have been a movie, and that, that just... I feel like this could have been a two hour fun first film or something like that in the series instead of being a 10 episode franchise. And that's just based off like how much they have to spread out, how much that has to happen. You know, so many characters and so many people from the, the video game franchise get like introduced in this series and they don't need to be in there. You know, it focuses on like one particular character here in one episode, one particular character here in one episode. And you don't need a lot of that. You just need like a two hour kind of fun combat romp with you know some comedic aspects and some storytelling aspects leave all the same characters in this you could have agent stone as the main bad guy or have sweet tooth as the main bad guy and one of the characters just comes up in the next season it would be really cool to have sweet tooth kind of be in like the the second movie or something like that because it, it he's in the show but he disappears for half the show and then he comes back i think sweet tooth is the most interesting character in this series which he should be because he's the most popular character in the franchise his kind of arc is really interesting and he's a lot of fun he's a maniac he's crazy he kills on contact he has a very interesting backstory you know it's just it's really fun to watch will arnett play this character in voice work and watch joe Samoa joe be the the actor behind the mask and stuff like that and there's there's a lot there but like you said you could have as most like first movies would do have the thomas hayden church agent stone character come into the mix be the main bad guy and kind of hint at this character of sweet tooth a hint at this character of calypso and kind of play it through maybe like a two or three movie run but instead here there's just is so much thrown at you it just it feels like this just being jumbled into a bunch of mess and that's necessarily a bad thing because the series is still fun but then it throws into all these aspects which are very tropey for a tv series you know it, it does some vehicular combat stuff but it's just not enough yeah, i feel like the the storytelling aspects are missing the i feel like they're they're just there's just not enough there to be fairly honest and then they try to you know tv it up and it just doesn't work and i just I didn't feel like it was interesting at all, but I do think it's successful and it's kind of, you know, production value 
I think it's successful in these characters. I think they look like the characters from the video game. I think they act like the characters from the video game. I think Thomas Hayden Church does a pretty nice job as Agent Stone. I think his his view and his world and how he's treated and his kind of idea of being a police force and then that post-apocalyptic world is really fascinating, really fun. And just, I think there are moments in this series which really work when it comes to that nature. Like I said, Sweet Tooth is absolutely delivers on the production and quality of Sweet Tooth and stuff like that. It's really fun to see what he does. I think, once again, you look at Stephanie Beatrice and I think she is fun. She opens up a little bit more uh, as, a, as an individual, as an actor, but I think she is much, much better in Brooklyn Nine-Nine than she is here. I think she's a little flat. I think she's a little a little um off kilter offbeat and i don't think her character has a lot of chemistry when it comes to her and john doe which is the anthony mackie character and that's not saying they're like they're bad or anything but i think that i think anthony mackie is just maybe he was miscast for this role um i think he is much more interesting when you watch him as like the falcon or something like that than he is here and i don't know if that's just kind of how the series plays out i don't know if that's something that i have a problem with but i just don't think the two characters really work well together when you have characters that are kind of the main focus of the tv series and they don't really work with a lot of chemistry i, I just i feel like that's a, like a problem to be fairly honest and there's a running thing with of course uh with her character and her brother and stuff like that and you know it's not like everything's bad. I, I, I hate to say it, but it's not like everything's bad. But it's a very first season type of show where it's not very strong. It, it leads into some things that are being developed that which will probably lead to a second season if there is one, if this is successful, which it will be. But you can definitely tell that this is a show that has a budget but doesn't have a big enough budget where it feels justified with some of the stuff it's doing. I think the CGI is pretty terrible in this show. I think some of the cars are cool, but they feel very post-apocalyptic cars that just don't really really aren't unique and stuff like that and i i don't know i just i, I i'm hoping for the second season to be better that's what that's what i'm hoping for i'm hoping that the first season problems of storytelling and the way it's edited and the way the character development i hope that kind of successfully works itself out when they kind of hone in their skills and what they're trying to do you see this all the time with first seasons and you know hopefully the second season problems don't happen but i think overall it's still a successful attempt i think it's still something that is worth watching i think it may upset some people from the the twisted metal franchise but it I think if you go in knowing that the first season is just a little rough around the edges and has a lot of issues, when it comes to its storytelling aspects, I think you will enjoy a lot more because there is some fun stuff to, fun stuff to watch. There's a ton of Easter eggs. There's a ton of characters you know. And it does it does lean into the humor, which, you know, it does work sometimes, but it doesn't work others. So that's kind of where I have to leave it when it comes to my review of Twisted Metal the first season. Uh, since they're all released on the first day, I'm not doing an episode by episode basis. But, you know, for the most part, it, it's still a successful, at least decent first season. It's not the best of the video game stuff that has been kind of coming out recently, but I think it's at least trying to be an entertaining film for what it's worth. So. And with that said, I'll give the uh, first season a 7 out of 10. I think it's, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, but with that said, that'll do it. That'll be my take on the first season of Twisted Metal, uh, which is now on Peacock, or at least will be on Peacock very, very soon. Uh, comments below when you watch it. Let me know what you think of it. Also, let me know, you know, kind of what your favorite thing from Twisted Metal is, like what's your favorite character what's your favorite game in the franchise what do you think overall that's why i'm kind of leaning at so anyways with that said thank you so much if you like what you see on this channel hit the subscribe button to join movie emporium hit that notification bell top the phone's coming next if you like the video awesome hit that like button and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video peace out